Hello, Whiskey Hobbit here. And today, in 2021, March the 17th, I will be reviewing Kalila. Now, this Kalila is their natural cast strength bottling. I bought this at auction for about 70 or 80 pounds, um, which is pretty much from what I hear roughly what it was going for before they discontinued it. About that. Um, it's a you can normally tell which vin, which one it is by the percentage alcohol. So this one's 59.3%. I think that was one of the later releases, so around 2013, 2014. I think it was discontinued in 2015, I think. Around 2015 it was discontinued. Um, could be wrong, might have been 2014. But 2014 to 15, discontinued. And before then, they would have occasional releases of this and I really like this I think it's a really good whiskey I don't know why they just discontinued it um and I mean maybe they just didn't have enough whiskey but it's Kalila come on what do you mean you don't have enough whiskey <laughs> oh hilarious anyway let's have a taste um now I have had this open for a while so it, from my memory it was a lot stronger when I originally tasted it um, a lot punchier, it's softened a bit, but it's still at 59%. It's still got pretty much everything that you want from a car strength Kalila. So, uh, the nose is fantastic. This is the thing, right? I like Kalila. The 12 year old whiskey's nice, the 18, it's nice. It's just nice. There's nothing there really that makes me think, oh, that's a good whiskey. Let me buy that. Kalila, if I'm going to buy it, it's going to, I'm going to buy it independ independently bottled. I'm not going to buy an official bottling because they're just not interesting enough. The Kalila mock is disgusting. It's just, I don't understand who thought that was a good idea. Um, the Distillers Edition, again, pointless. Just get the 12. The, the 18 as well is an odd one because it's less smoky considerably less smoky than the 12, which is generally the reason why people buy Kalila is because of the smoke. Don't get me wrong, I understand smoky whiskies lose the smoke with age. Fine. It just becomes so sweet. And the strength of it, obviously, the 12 and the, 6, uh, the 18 are both at 43% alcohol because it's Diageo. And then it's like, but I could just buy like a 12-year-old independently bottled Kalila probably at car strength for maybe 50 pounds rather than Kalila 12. So yeah, it's a shame that they've discontinued this because I think this is a fantastic little addition. It's definitely better than, I think it's what they should do with Lagavulin car strength because at the moment the Lagavulin car strength whiskey is the 12 year old and is 120 pounds or something stupid like that. Why would you buy it? I, I know it's good. I know it's good. But the 16's really good. Just get the 16. Why would you bother spending more than twice the price on a 12-year-old whiskey? And I think Lagavulin should basically release something like this. If Lagavulin released a non-age statement car strength whiskey, brilliant, rather than bringing out an 8-year-old, which is lot, it's nice. The 8-year-old is lovely. And then they brought out the the Nick Offerman 11-year-old exclusive to America because of Parks and Recreation and his love of Lagavulin in real life and in the show. Just, and it comes in a nice wooden box. Just make good whiskey and release it at a reasonable price and that isn't overhyped. That's that literally all I would like. I mean, Ardbeg recently released a five-year-old whiskey. Brilliant. Great idea, good good strength on it. I think it's forty seven percent, forty eight percent, and it sounds like it's got good reviews. The problem with uh, the Ardbeg and I imagine with Lagavulin and probably Kalila is the hype, the amount of people who will buy it no matter what it is. Oh, it's a new whiskey, I must have it. Uh, and um, I mean, the loads of distilleries have this issue. I I was thinking about earlier today about Springbank and how. The um, uh, local barley edition that they used to, well, they still do every year, once a year. 
used to be quite affordable and interesting and different. It wasn't something I would necessarily buy myself. I've tried a couple and they're nice. Some of them fantastic, but some of them just okay. And now it's like that you get a 10-year-old local barley spring bank for £90, and that's retail. No, <laughs> I'll just get the 10-year-old. It's stupid. Um, I appreciate it might be amazing, but without trying it, why would I bother wasting money? Anyway, getting back to Kalila, you should... Kalila should do this again. It is really good. Lagavulin should do this. Get rid of the 12. It's pointless. Just release a non-age statement Lagavulin. I don't care if it's all five-year-old Lagavulin and you're charging me 60 quid or 70 quid. I would buy it. That doesn't make a lot of sense from what I've just said about age statements and pricing. But there's like Lagavulin at a young age, like five years old to six years old, is incredible, as is Kalila. They're both phenomenal at that age it's they've got such a phenolic rich oiliness to them which you lose the older it gets and i think at that age it is not a complex whiskey but it's certainly fun and tasty and brilliant and i think whatever's in this isn't old it's it, it just smells like maybe eight years old i would say maybe nine maybe ten between eight and ten I'm not going to say any more than that because it really doesn't... I don't think it's like a 12-year-old just souped up. Nah. But uh, it's very phenolic, very kind of... There's a lovely oaky woodiness as well to it, like a really lovely um, leafiness. Like, I don't know, like a... Oh. What are those trees you get in Australia? You know the trees, like not not bamboo. Um, uh, well, trees that have a lot of sap on the outside and they have quite a pungent smell to them, like that. Hopefully, you know what tree I'm talking about. It's got a very maritimey kind of saltiness as well. Mm. Lip. Oh. <laughs> ah, it's got a punch. It's a bit. I think my manager, <laughs> so my old manager at Royal Mall, always used to refer to uh, this whiskey being a bit like rocket fuel. Oh, yeah, it is, it is. It's like rocket fuel powered by lemons. Um, they could write that on the label. That'd be a great little advertising. You know, just saying. You know, you could bring it back. Rocket fuel with lemons. I'd buy that. Um, without water, it's like gasoline. It is powerful, punchy. Again, the medicinal elements of it and the earthiness hit so hard. And it's hard to really make out anything else other than sweet lemons. That's about all I can get from that at car strength. With a bit of water... It's already become a lot more subtle on the nose. It smells like sort of wet vegetation and kind of a fresh meadow, that kind of thing. You know, like if you've ever walked in wood when it's been raining and it's been wanting water for a while and it's now just everything smells fresh and open and kind of earthy sweetness to it. Oh, that's nice. There is an oiliness to that, like just gas, like genuine like greasy oiliness that if you didn't know this was whiskey it'd be worrying mm. Mm. so the smokiness and the punchiness has all died down a bit. But it's left a funny residual kind of almost seaweedy tang to it. I don't know. I don't know what it is. It's nice. I've no idea what it is, though. It is a bit of a bizarre tasting note. I can't really put my finger on it. 
it, it's got a tang, like a sourness to it, which I wasn't expecting. And it's not like lemon sour. I just mean sour, um, like some sort of sour sweet. And then the smoke as well, because it's so much more dialed down with the water, it's a lot more accessible and a lot less punchy with the alcohol. Um, I, I kind of prefer a car strength. <laughs> It, it's it's a little more floppy at, uh, I don't know, I, I'm going to say that's probably been watered down to about 47%. About that. Um, I will say, if you do want to add water, you need to add quite a bit to this for it to really show off. Bacon. Bacon cheese. Just got that note. I've no idea why, but there you go. Yeah, more water doesn't help. It doesn't make it any different, really. Just the smoke's a bit more subtle. That's about it. But yeah, um, really good bottle. If you can find it at auction, I'd recommend it. Um, they do lots of different percentages, obviously, with the different vintages. Um, I'm not entirely sure when this was released, but I think it was around 2013. But uh, yeah, really good. And it's generally not too expensive at auction, so I'd look out for it. Um, but uh, as I said, if Kalida can do something like this again, and Lagavulin, top notch. But yeah, thanks very much, and I'll be back soon.